Is my one year piano progress video fake? No. But really though? No. So I've had more than 2,000 comments on my one year piano progress video. And even though the vast majority of them are either supportive or telling me to get a sustain pedal, there are probably about a couple of dozen calling me a fake or saying that there's no way I've like learned to read music in four days or three months or six months or whatever. And I understand why this happens. There are progress videos on YouTube that might be fake. We'll talk about them more at the end of the video. But then I started thinking about it in a bit more depth and it turns out I have a whole bunch of thoughts on this topic that go everywhere from like how talent and practice work to the nature of free will itself. So that's what I'm going to talk about in today's video and I hope you stick with it because it might get kind of weird. Okay so first, is the progress fake? No. So at the start of that video I was practicing for a couple of hours a day and whenever you start a new skill the learning curve is quite like steep, you get better at it quite fast. And as I said in my video about sight reading, by the time you've practiced something a few times you're not really reading that music anymore. So in some of the videos where I've got music in front of me I'm kind of using it more like a reference or a memory jogger than actually reading every note that's on the stave. But my second thought about this is that progress just doesn't happen in a vacuum. Everybody who learns anything comes to it with like a preformed set of like skills and suppositions and habits that are good or bad that could like help or hinder you on the way and it's up to you as the learner or the teacher to take advantage of those or to work around them. So for instance I had a ton of comments about my posture in that video, shout out my posture pals, and I think that probably comes from a whole bunch of different stuff in the past. Like I have spent a lot of time deadlifting and squatting and you can see an overhead squat video elsewhere on my channel and you cannot do that stuff without like a basic understanding of how to keep a good straight spine. I've also done like tightrope walking in the past, who knows maybe that fed into it. And then another thing that I think plays to my advantage is that I have done jiu-jitsu for a long time so I'm used to watching other people demonstrate skills and really concentrating on like the physical minutiae, the little details that make all the difference when you practice them for a long time. So a lot of people play the piano with flat fingers and really what you want is more of this curl shape. I've heard it described like you're holding a bubble and that was something I concentrated on from day one because I knew it would be important later. So another thing that really helped me is that as a journalist I'd spoken to dozens and dozens of high performers across different fields and kind of got a vibe for what worked for them. And also I have read a ton of stuff about how talent works and is developed across a bunch of disciplines. So I came to piano knowing how deliberate practice works, how you form good habits, and how to concentrate on stuff and not get distracted most of the time. And that stuff all helped me, and some of that is stuff that you can work on. I don't have that much spare time, I've got a family and a quite demanding job to worry about. I have a lot of other stuff going on in my life that I have to think about, but ultimately life is not fair and you work with what you've got. And nobody else is gonna come to piano with exactly the same kind of experience and skills that I had going in, but everyone has their own advantages. And you really just have to learn to leverage them. So maybe you're coming in with a great sense of rhythm from playing another instrument or dancing in your past. Maybe you can already read music a little bit. Maybe you're really good at concentrating, which I think is a skill in itself and a really underrated one. Maybe you've got the disposable income to get a great teacher. Maybe you happen to have a great teacher near you. Maybe you've just got a ton of free time. Maybe you don't have any of these things and all you have is a bad keyboard and a real burning desire to get good at piano. And like, if that's the case, sometimes that is going to be all you need. A concept that I love from the literature on talent formation is the rage to master. And that's something that scientists and psychologists quite often identify in like children and high performers in a lot of spheres. And it's basically just really, really wanting to be good at something and bearing down on it until you get where you want to be. And this is a good jumping off point to talk about something else, which is natural talent, which is something that I think is very misunderstood. So I think the role of natural talent or genetics in sport is pretty undeniable. Like I could have started training as a sprinter when I was three years old done everything right and I still wouldn't be able to beat Usain Bolt in a race. In a sport like mixed martial arts it's becoming increasingly about how naturally athletic the guys are but it's a very technical sport so who knows if I'd started as a child and had amazing coaches all the way then maybe I could have become a world champion and like overcome my natural shortness. But things get even fuzzier with piano because even though there's a physical element to it the vast majority of it is mental. And from what I understand, the role of natural talent and genetics is much less well established in fields that are mostly to do with the brain 
and not like fast twitch fibers or whatever. So I talked about the Rage to Master, but as far as I know, there's no real consensus on where the Rage to Master comes from. Is it like an innate thing or something that you build up over time? And then any process that's mostly mental is about the myelination of pathways in the brain. And even though we're starting to understand more about that process, we still don't really know whether some people like naturally do it faster than others. So is it likely that you're naturally gifted or hopeless at a skill like piano or chess? I would say probably not. Is it likely that you already have like a bunch of skills and assumptions and things like that that make you more or less likely to concentrate hard and practice in the right way? It definitely is. To be honest, I think that even how much you practice and want to practice and whether you have the rage to master is not fully within your control. Everything you've learned since you were a baby is going to feed into like a set of assumptions you have about the world and a set of habits that you have and stuff like how hard you can concentrate and practice is going to be influenced by that. At some point, the question becomes whether you have any free will at all or whether everything you ever do is just the product of like your environment and what else is going on in the world. But that's quite a complicated conversation for a video about fake piano progress. And so finally, I want to talk about some of the other progress videos on YouTube and what they meant to me in the early going. And look, there is one other video that I watched when I was first starting the piano. And if you've seen any of my videos, you've probably seen this one. It's one of the most popular ones on YouTube. The progress is out of this world impressive. It is far beyond what I managed in a year. And I've seen whole other videos dedicated to like forensically pulling it apart and trying to decide whether it's fake or not. And my take on it is, I don't think it's fake. I think the guy in it might have done some lessons as a kid or played a different instrument and not really mentioned that in the video and then not wanted to talk about it later after he'd already put the video out. But do I think he could already like play the piano amazingly well and then just decided to make this video out of nowhere? No, I don't think that. I also think he practiced incredibly hard. He definitely practiced harder and more than me. He probably focused more than me. And he also had a teacher, which I'm sure more than like doubles the efficiency of the practice hours you put in. Some of the pieces in that video, I will say that after three years, I don't feel like I'm even close to hitting the kind of standard he was hitting in his first eight months on them. But then that doesn't necessarily mean it's fake. I do believe that he probably benefited from things that I don't have, like a stronger rage to master and like the capacity to hire a teacher and practice a lot. But the most important thing I would say about that video is I tried to keep up with his rate of progress for like two or three months. I was practicing a lot and I was feeling like, yeah, I'm doing this. And then at some point, like a ghost car in Mario Kart, he just kind of sped off into the distance and left me for dust. And I was like, well, I guess I'm not learning as fast as that guy. But ultimately that doesn't matter. That video really inspired me with what I thought was possible. And it was one of the huge influences on getting me into piano in the first place. So if the guy who made that video happens to see this one, then I would like to say thank you very much. You inspired me and changed my life. And I do not think you're a faker. What I would say is you have to work with what you've got. So start where you are, pick up something new, try your best at it and see where it takes you. It doesn't matter how fast anybody is learning. It doesn't matter how fast you're progressing. Your only competition is you. Calling other people out for fakery is a waste of time that you could spend on doing something more worthwhile with your life. Go practice. <laughs>